Hello everyone. Today I thought I will share with you an interesting piece of information I was not aware of till recently. It was something I learned from a poster in the British Association of Dermatologists annual meet held last year. So the question is, apart from the usual details on sun exposure, what social history do you want to ask a patient who has been prescribed 5 fluorouracil? Well, the answer is, do you have any pets? Now, we usually inquire about pets in anybody who has eczema or ATP um, because you're worried about possible contact allergies to the hair. But it is relevant for acne damage as well. And I'd like to illustrate the point with two previous case reports, and then we'll look at the literature. This was the first article. It came in the archives of dermatology in 2010, and it illustrates a 63-year-old gentleman with a history of multiple actinic keratosis and squamous cell carcinoma. He was prescribed 5 fluorouracil He actually came to the plastic surgery department, but the patient refused to take it on. The reason was he was previously prescribed 5 fluorouracil and unfortunately the tube was bitten by his 2 kg Yorkshire Terrier. Shortly after that he began to vomit and have seizures. The Animal Poison Control Center told him that 5 fluorouracil was incredibly toxic to dogs and they recommended that he take the dog immediately to the local veterinary emergency care facility. He therefore took his dog in a comatose phase and unfortunately he died a few hours later. This was Ruby, the Yorkshire Terrier that sadly passed away. The second case was from clinical and experimental dermatology and this describes a 59 year old patient who was an azathioprine for Crohn's disease and was using Ephedix cream for keratotic lesions on his forehead. Now he'd applied the cream and gone to sleep and he was woken up by his Jack Russell who was licking his face and therefore his cream. Now the dog was a Jack Russell, Russell Terrier type weighing about seven kilograms and soon after ingestion of the cream he exhibited signs of ataxia, tremor and vomiting. Unfortunately he too became very unwell and had to be euthanized following accidental emergency in ingestion of 5 fluorouracil. Both pets had been overcome by 5 fluorouracil toxicity and this was first reported in the veterinary literature as early as 1987 and there's an excellent review article published in the journal of veterinary internal medicine that i've referenced in the text box below this video in that they reported 26 cases of 5 fluorouracil in dogs and it was due to accident accidental ingestion in every case the clinical signs associated with 5 fluorouracil poisoning in dogs include vomiting and diarrhea which is with or without blood, tremors, lethargy, ataxia, seizures, often status epilepticus, and then cardiac arrhythmias and respiratory depressions and finally death. These symptoms usually come on within 45 to 60 minutes of exposure with death coming within a day about 16 hours later. 5 fluorouracil is more toxic to cats although the majority of toxicosis have been reported in dogs and this possibly because dogs lick their owners a lot more than cats do. At least that's my theory. In a 2 kg dog, a potential lethal dose may be only 0.8 grams of cream, which could easily be just ingested with just one puncture bite through the tube. There are various ways by which pets can be exposed to the cream. The commonest variety is the pet just biting the tube of ointment. But the other ways include licking a treated area, as we've seen, and also if the patient applies the creams on the hands and then grooms the pets, um, either the dog or the cat. This was the post I was talking about from the British Association of Dermatologists annual meeting. They also mention other creams that can be toxic, including topical calcipotriol and calcitriol. So what are the learning points? Firstly, we have to warn our patients about the potential toxicity of the creams to their pets. Secondly, advise them to use and store the cream carefully out of reach of their canine friends. Next, if they are petting or grooming their dog, 
they should wash their hands thoroughly first. And finally, it's high time the dermatologists themselves are made aware of it. I myself did not know about this until six months ago, and therefore it's a very valuable learning point for me. Thank you for listening. Bye.